I was willing to sacrifice myself if needed. Um, death was something I accepted already the moment the first shots were fired. When the customer alerted me to the shooting outside, I, I didn't do the smartest thing. I ran outside myself and I saw the gunmen uh, shoot down a customer who was coming into the store. Uh, the customer was shot in the back. And after I saw that, I immediately ran inside uh, and was one of the first people to call 911 within the store. Uh, gunshots were live while I was calling. And so the police heard that. And then after I hung up, it was, it was go time. In the store, our Starbucks um, kiosk is at the west, ex uh, it's right next to the west side uh, near the exit. And so customers were rushing out, um, trying to like assess the situation. I was trying to rush them all out. Uh, I saw him first when he entered the building, he rushed in literally running with his gun. Um, shots were directed in my direction um, see, I saw Ricky Olds, um, the 25 year old, she was, she was another best friend of mine and seeing, I saw her get shot and fall to the ground. My coworker was back in the kiosk. She's a 69 year old lady and she's my elder. And I knew it was my responsibility to, uh, protect her life. And so I, I rushed her into a corner. I shoved two of the trash cans we have to cover her body. And then I was just like, I have to find a place for myself. I'm a big guy, I'm 6'4", so it was hard to find a place for myself and I ended up hiding behind a trash can. And about 20 minutes later, um, the gunman, I don't know if he was out of ammo or if he was armed at the time, he was 13 feet away from me outside of the kiosk at one point. And there was a situation in my mind that I was trying to think if I should be a hero and try and disarm him or try and neutralize him. But I didn't know if it was just one individual or if there were multiple. How did you stay safe and get others to safety in the midst of that kind of chaos? I guess all of Colorado's mass shootings the majority of them have happened in my lifetime. I'm 20 years old and it, it, it's it been a situation in the back of my head my whole life. And to be in it, it activated um, in my mind. And I, I knew what to do, uh, or I think I knew what to do, um, but I was willing to sacrifice myself if needed. Um, death was something I accepted already the moment the first shots were fired. Chilling uh, to hear that. And on top of that, you were friends with one of the folks who never made it out of that store, Denny. Tell us a little bit about him tonight. So Denny, Denny Stong, he, he, was, a, he was a brother to me. Uh, he was the little brother. He was annoying. He poked fun at me. We poked fun at each other. When literally that day I was talking with him, uh, right before shooting happened, and even during shooting, I was with Denny. Um, and when the first shots were fired, we ran off in separate directions, um, and I never saw him again. But yes, he, he's a brother. He was a brother to me. Uh, as you, again, as you still process this all tonight, where, where do you go from here? How do you, you kind of keep um, going after something like this? Um, to be honest, it's definitely falling on top of me. Um, it's slowly building up. I haven't fully come to acceptance of any of it. Um, but, um, I, I never was heavily religious, but I definitely believe God was watching over me at the time. And I'm, I'm grateful that I was being watched and protected and, um, I'll be forever grateful for that. I am, I send my thoughts and prayers to everyone in the situation and uh, may their souls rest in peace.
And it sounds like a lot of folks in that store should be grateful that you were there watching over them in a moment of crisis. Logan, uh, honored to talk to you, and I wish you nothing but the best and, and nothing but respect uh, for, for, what, sure. for what you did yesterday. Take care. Thank you. You too.